Okay, here we have 8.3 trigonomic equations. So it says solving equations is a technique that has been used since early algebra courses. For example, solution to 2x plus 1 equals 7 is true when x equals 3 and false for all other solutions. Um, trigonomic equations can also be solved. Solutions to equations are values of the variable that make the equation a true statement. Okay, so example one says, determine the following values of theta, whether the following values of theta are solutions to this equation. So essentially, when I plug in these particular theta values, do I get a true statement? So I have sine of pi over four equal to one half. I don't think that's true, but we'll verify in the calculator. Sine of pi over four. No, this is square root of three over, or I'm sorry, square root of two over two. Which is not equal to one half. So this is not a solution to that particular equation, okay? Here we're gonna try this one. So sine of pi over six equal to one half. Sine of pi over six, the left-hand side is one half. So this is a true statement. So here we would say pi over six is a solution to that equation, to this specific equation, okay? So now it tells us, because all six of the trigonomic functions are periodic, they repeat themselves every certain amount of degrees of radiance. This means that they are there are infinite solutions to the equation sine theta equals one over two. What are some of the other solutions? Okay, so what we need to do is we need to think about our unit circle. Now, where is the y value? Because sine is y. So where is the y value equal to one half? The sine, the y value is equal to one half here at pi over six, here at five pi over six, here at seven pi over six, and here at 11 pi over 6. However, these y values are negative, and this is not a negative y value. So that's why this pi over, 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6 would not be potential solutions. However, pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6 would be solutions, okay? So we know that pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6 are solutions. Now, what happens though if I go all the way around the circle and I come back here? It's not pi six, even though it looks like pi six, it's actually 13 pi over six because pi over six plus one full rotation, two pi radians equals 13 pi over six. So 13 pi over six is in that exact same spot on the unit circle and therefore it has the same y value and therefore it will have the same solution, sine of 13 pi over 6 is equal to 1 half. The same thing can be said about the other spot, right? If I am here at 5 pi over 6 and I go around one full rotation, 2 pi units, now I'm at 17 pi over 6 and that's another solution. I could keep doing this all day long. I could take 13 pi over 6 and tag on another 2 pi, that's going to give me 25 pi over 6. I could add another 2 pi for that. That's going to give me 37 pi over 6. I could take the 17 pi over 6 and tag on another 2 pi. That's going to give me 30 pi over 6. I can, um, no, it'll give me 29 pi over 6. Sorry, can't add 29 over 36. I could tag on another 2 pi. And that would be 41 pi over 6, and so on and so forth. So there are an infinite, because I could keep adding 2 pi forever to each one, right? So we could potentially have all the infinite um, solutions there. 
But what they do instead is we know that the period for sine is two pi. So instead of um, listing all of them or some of them, I can represent all of them by saying that the theta will equal pi over six or the theta will equal five pi over six, but then include every single um, that comes after that. You just say where k is an integer. And because it's an integer, it could be positive or negative, which means I could start here and rotate in the positive direction and get the next solution, or I could start here and rotate in the other direction and get more solutions, okay? Those would be negative angles at that point, but that's okay. As long as they're landing right here on the unit circle, they're still solutions because they still have the y value of one half, okay? And so these are what we call the general solutions. And why do I use two pi? Because the period for sine and cosine is two pi. We have to talk about something though, because the period for tangent is not two pi. The period for tangent is pi. So that is going to affect, whenever I do my general solutions for a tangent function, I will not be putting two pi there. I will only be putting pi k, okay? So let's go ahead and, 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 and stretch this out to a cosine function. So we've got this cosine function. I'm going to take that cosine function and I'm going to solve for cosine. So I get square root of three over two. Or I went too far. I am doing the thing in my head, my steps. So equals zero. The first thing I'm going to do is add this over. We get 2 cosine theta equals square root of 3. Divide by 2, divide by 2. We get cosine theta equal to square root of 3 over 2. Now, now if you do it in the calculator, the calculator is only going to give you the one answer that's in that particular restricted domain but we're not talking about restricted domains on these equations. So you really have to use the unit circle for these problems. Because if I were to do, um, if I were to take this and say that theta equals the sine inverse of one half, the calculator is not going to give me both of these answers. It's only going to give me the answer that's in that domain of sine inverse, or, um, range, I guess, of sine inverse, domain of sine, restricted domain of sine, which means it would only give me this one, the pi over six. It will never give me that other one, okay? So you have to be very careful um, about using that calculator. You could use the calculator and get pi over six, but then understand that in the whole unit circle, there's another guy with the same y value, okay? So similarly, I can partially use the calculator here to figure this out. So I can say theta is the cosine inverse of square root of three over two. But this is only gonna partially give me the answer and you have to remember that. If you don't remember that, you're not gonna get half the answers, okay? So divide by pi and convert to a fraction. I get that theta is equal to pi over six again, okay? Using the calculator. So I used the calculator, I did it, I got this fraction, I divided by pi, converted it to a fraction. So the answer was pi over six. Now, on the unit circle though, remember, here's pi over six. Remember, cosine is the x value. And it's telling me that that x value is this number. Where else do we have a positive same x value on the unit circle. Over here and over here is going to be a negative x value, right? Over here is going to be the positive x value. And what is this angle right there? It is 2 pi minus pi over 6, which is 11 pi over 6. Okay, so that's the other angle. 
So you say this one or 11 pi over 6. There's two answers there on that unit circle. Two values with a positive x um, value. Now, it says give the general formula for all solutions. So then that means theta equals pi over 6 plus, what is the period of cosine? 2 pi. Or theta equals pi over 11 pi over 6 plus 2 pi. And then it says list eight of the solutions. Normally when they say that, take half of them from here and half of them from there. So I'm going to take for k equal to zero, I'm going to say pi over six plus no nothing, which get pi over six. 11 pi over six plus no two pi's is pi over six. Then take k equal to one. So now I'm going to have pi over six. Wait, sorry. I just hit my desk. Pi over 6 plus 2 pi is going to be, um, they're over here. I should have written them down here. k equal to 0, k equal to 1. I get, let's see, 13 pi over 6. I'm going to leave a blank and I'm going to do k equal to 2. So I'm going to add another 2 pi. I get 25 pi over 6. And then I'm going to need another blank. I'm going to do k equal to 3. And that should give me 8 of them. So plus 2 pi again. I get 37 pi over 6. Then for the 11 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6, I'm going to add 2 pi. I get 23 pi over 6 add 2 pi again. I get 35 pi over 6 and add 2 pi last time. I get 47 pi over 6. And do I have 8 of them? I have 2, 4, 6, 8. 8 solutions there. The ugly part of this problem is having to type in all 8 of those things in my math lab. It's annoying. And it's not hard, but it's annoying. So those are the eight solutions that they're looking for, okay? This is the general solutions that they're looking for. Now, let's keep exploring like they have here. So it says, what if you have an equation that says sine of three theta equals negative one, right? And they specifically tell you they only want you to give them the answers between 0 and 2 pi. So they don't want all the answers. They just want the answers between 0 and 2 pi. Okay. So you really have to pay attention to that because if that statement, this is not there, then you're going to have to give them the general solutions. If that is there, then you only give them the answers within that interval. Okay. So what does that mean? We still are doing the same thing as before. We're trying to figure out sine of what angle equals negative one, okay? You're still trying to do the same thing. The only thing is, is that the angle is three theta. So you're trying to find when three theta, what is that going to be? When does the angle equal three pi over two? So what I can do, is I can take my equation. Oops, I'm doing the wrong. I'm doing steps that are in my head too soon. So I can say that 3 theta, whatever that angle is, is the sine inverse of negative 1. So 3 theta equals sine inverse of negative 1 and divide by pi, convert it to a fraction, I get negative pi over 2. Now look at that. That happens here. That's when the y value is negative 1, right? Sine means y value. Where's the y value? Negative 1, down here. It doesn't happen anywhere else in the unit circle. It does not. It only happens at that one spot. So this is the only solution I have here. I don't have an or or something else. This is the only one because of my analyzing the unit circle, okay? So we know that that angle needs to be negative pi over two. 
Um, another way of saying negative pi over two, because is negative pi over two in this interval? It is not. Negative pi over two is the same as saying three pi over two. So don't put negative three pi over two as the solution there when it's saying when theta is between zero and two pi, okay? Now, if there were, they were asking me for a general solution, this is sine, so it would be two pi k, right? Now, if I solve this for theta, that means I would have to divide by three here. But when you divide things by three, you have to divide every term by three, which means I get theta by itself, but now this three cancels with that three and I get pi over two by itself plus two pi over three K now. Interesting, right? So um, Let's see what that hat now it says over the interval zero to two pi, what are all the solutions? So if k were equal to zero, if k were to equal to zero, we would just get pi over two. If k were equal to one, we would get pi over two plus two pi pi over two plus two pi over three, and that's seven pi over six, that is still within two pi. So that is going to be an answer. Then if I do k equal to two, so I'm gonna add a second two pi over three, and I get 11 pi over six. This is also in the interval. So 11 pi over six. Now if I try to do k equal to three, I would add a another pi, two pi over three, and that's five pi over two, which is bigger than two pi. Four pi over two is two pi, and this is bigger than four pi. So that one would not be included, and anything bigger would not be, okay? And I wouldn't use negative numbers either, because if I try to use a negative there, plus two pi over three times a negative one, I get a negative angle and it's supposed to be angles between zero and two pi, positive, right? So doing an k equal to a negative one wouldn't have worked either. So there's really only three actual solutions within this interval. Okay, so let's look at the next one. The next one says, use the calculator to solve this one um, and then before a calculator is used, what quadrants, because remember you find all the answers, what quadrant should we expect our theta to be in, okay? In other words, where can we expect the value of sine to be positive? Because this is a positive value, so that means that the y is positive, right? Where is the y positive in your unit circle? The y values are positive in these two quadrants which means I could be in quadrant one or in quadrant two. Now, in the calculator, we're gonna do sine inverse zero, oh, 0 0.04. And we get this value. Round it to two decimal places, 0 0.04. And that's okay. But that's the Y value, right? So the Y value is 0 0.4. So if this is one, that's about a half, that means the y value is here. And this one also has the same y value. And I know that this angle is 0 0.04 radians. Now it may not be a multiple of pi, but it's still um, an angle. And over here, what is it? I don't know, let me see. What is pi minus, because this is just that many units short of pi. Um, I'll just do that, and I get 3.1. So this theta is equal to 3.10. Okay, so there's two different answers there. Two different answers. So you've got, um, let 
you've got 0 0.04, and then you also have pi minus 0 0.04, which is this angle. It's actually this angle, not that angle. That angle is another 0 0.4, but this angle is 3.1. Like that. Not that angle. So, so 3.0. And if I were to go just 0 0.04 more, that angle, I would be at pi, right? So 3.10. So that's how you can figure out both solutions. You think about where these values would be positive or negative. So you know what quadrants they lie in. They have to have the same y value or the same x value. So you figure that out. And then you can figure out whether to subtract it from pi or subtract it from 2 pi, depending on the image, to figure out what's happening. OK? So let's see. Um, it says from expiration number 3. So it says solve this equation when theta is between 0 and 2 pi. So for this particular problem, um, let me see. So we have this problem here, what they're saying is they're saying, how do you so let u equal the cosine. So instead of 2 cosine squared, it's 2 u squared. And then instead of cosine there, we use u. And then you can um, factor this equation. So you get 2u and 1, u and 1, and then a minus and a plus equal to 0. And then set each one equal to 0. So you get 2u equal to negative 1, or u equal to negative 1 half. And over here, you get u equal to 1. So the answers are 1 and negative 1 half. Thank you. So, um, there we go. So that's what we do. We solve for u. Then from there, we have to go back and back up, right? So now if u is cosine of theta, then we know cosine of theta equals 1 or cosine of theta equals 1 half. And then if I do the cosine inverse for each of these, cosine inverse of 1 equals zero. Um, oh, they want the final answer. So let me do some side work here. So then I know that theta equals zero, which is here. So remember that could happen to pi k. And then I know that theta equals one half. So cosine inverse of negative one half. And I get divide by pi, convert it to a fraction. I get theta equals 2 pi over 3, and 2 pi over 3 is 1, um, that's the same, 4 pi over 6. So 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6. And what has the same x value here would be a value, it would be an angle down here. And so then that would be pi plus, oh no, let's see, how would I figure out that value there? So it would be this distance here and this distance here. So what is pi minus 2 pi over 3? It is, um, so this distance right here is pi over 3. So then I'm going to take pi. It. So add pi and I get 4 pi over 6. So that's what this angle is. So you really have to um, use your construction of angles in order to figure out what that value is. So the calculator told me 2 pi over 3. Fantastic. That's this one. Um, the x value is. Um, only going to equal a positive one at one spot. So I didn't need to consider another point for, for this equation. But for this one, where the x value is negative one half, that can occur um, 
in either of these two quadrants because the x value is negative one half here, here, the one the calculator gave me. And then to figure out what this one was, I figured out what that difference was by taking pi minus two pi over three, I got one pi over three. So then that would be the same distance here because this is symmetric. And then I took pi plus that pi over three and I got the four pi over three. So the other measurement is four pi over three plus two pi k plus two pi k. Now it does ask me for all of the answers within this interval. So for zero, it really, if I add two pi to it, I'm gonna get two pi, which is not included in the interval. It just says less than two pi. Zero is included in the interval. So I can put zero, but I can't put the next one, which would be two pi, because it's not going to be in the interval. So then here we have two pi over three. And then if I add two pi to that, that is gonna be larger than two pi, of course, right? And then we have four pi over three. And if I add two pi to that, again, it will be larger than two pi. So these are the only three um, answers that we would have. It might have been a different story if the angle wasn't just theta all by itself. Maybe it was cosine squared of five theta, right? Um, minus five theta minus one, right? Then I would have had to have divided all these things by five, and then I possibly would have more solutions within zero to two pi. But that wasn't the case for that particular problem. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the last example before I talk about a couple of problems from the homework. Now, I only have a few problems from the homework selected, but um, they are worth mentioning. So, for this problem, it says to solve an equation, all the trigonomic functions need to be the same. So use an identity to rewrite the equation in terms of all sine or all cosine. So what I'm gonna do is because I have a sine here and a sine there, I'm going to add to a sine. And so how do I do that? I know that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. And if I solve for cosine theta, I get one minus sine squared theta. So instead of writing cosine theta, I'm going to write what, is the, what it is equivalent to, which is one minus sine squared theta. And then I'm gonna rewrite the rest of the problem. And so then what I end up here is negative two sine squared theta plus sine theta plus one equal to zero. I don't like my front number being negative, so I'm gonna divide everybody by negative one, or I could think of it as I'm moving everything over to the right-hand side. In any event, everything is gonna change signs. So then I can solve this. I get two sine theta times one, sine theta times one. And I could use the substitution method. I just can do it without the substitution method. So negative and positive. And so then I get, oh, um, it just tells me to keep sign solving for it. So I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna set this one equal to zero. And then I'm gonna set this one equal to zero. So I get negative one half equal to sine theta or, or I get one theta equals sine inverse of negative one half or I get theta equals sine inverse of one. Now here I'm going to draw the unit circle, right? Where does the y value equal one? Only here in that one spot. So when I do this computation, I know that's the only value there. But for this one, if I look at the unit circle, where is the y value negative half? It happens, um, it happens twice, once over here and once over here. And I don't know what the particular angle is. I'm just gonna draw it in the middle, although it might not actually be in the middle. I just draw it there just for some space, okay? So when I do find this answer, I'm going to have to figure out what the next one is, okay? Because there are two that have a y value of negative one half, okay? 
this y value being negative one half. Now let's use our calculator. So I forgot the inverse. So sine inverse of one first, because that's the, the only one, divide by pi, convert to a fraction. I get pi over two. It's the only one. That's it. Now let's do sine inverse of negative one over two. Divide by pi, convert it to a fraction. I get negative pi over six. Now that's this guy, negative pi over six. Normally we don't use the negatives, we use the positives. So what is negative pi over six equivalent to? Add two pi to it. It's equivalent, oh, negative pi over six plus two pi. It's equivalent to 11 pi over six. So that's great. But now I need to figure out what this one is. So I know that this distance is pi over six units, which means this distance is pi over six units. So I've got pi plus another pi over six units. That means this angle is seven pi over six. Now, if you have a unit circle already drawn out and written, you don't have to do all this. You don't even have to do this part in the calculator. You could have just looked at it and figured out which points had the y value of negative two, and you would have seen it was 11 pi over six and seven pi over six. I'm not using the um, unit circle already prepared. I'm using my brain and the calculator, right? So it's taking me a little bit longer to figure out those values. But now I know what they are. I know that we have seven pi over six and we have 11 pi over six. So remember um, the general solutions? Well, the angle was just theta. So if I add two pi to that, it's only gonna go outside of this interval. If I add two pi to this, it's only gonna go outside the interval. If I add two pi to that, it's gonna go outside the interval. So my three solutions, I'm gonna put them in order, would be pi over two, seven pi over six, and then 11 pi over six. And all three of these guys are going to be my solutions. And so if you learn how to factor with the sines and the cosines there, it's fine. If you have to come over here and say u equals sine theta, and then convert that into two u squared minus u minus one, and then factor 2u plus 1, u minus 1, and then set each one of those guys equal to 0, and then solve for u, and then go back and put in cosine and sine. So then you'll go from here to here. See, these two correspond, right? u is sine of theta, and these two things correspond. u is equal to 1. Okay, so if you have to do the u sub, go for it. If not, I mean, notice it saved me a few lines if you learn how to factor without having to u sub, right? I saved myself one, two, three, four, five, well, maybe four lines because I still had to set each one equal to zero. So from here, I only had two steps and then I got to this. Over here, I had one, two, three, four, five steps before I got to that, right? So you do save yourself quite a bit of steps doing it without having to use sub. But until you get used to it, you might as well just do use sub, right? Okay, with all that said, I want to go over a couple of examples from the homework. So I'm gonna do that now. So let's see, um, the first one, So here we are, um, dun, dun, dun. sorry, just checking my message, I have an email like 30 minutes, so I've got to get through this. So 8.3 then, the homework assignment. I see number four, mine looks something like this. So then I subtracted one and I got four secant theta equal to eight divided by four 
So I got secant theta equal to two, and then I converted this into cosine theta, and then I cross multiplied, so two cosine theta equals one, and then I divided by two, and I got cosine as equal to one half. And then I looked at the unit circle, and I realized that the x value is a positive one half um, here and here, right, on my unit circle. So I've got two angles there. When I do cosine inverse of one half in my calculator, um, divide by pi and convert to a fraction, I get pi over three, which is this angle here, pi over three. But this one is the same distance downward. So I'm going to do 2 pi minus pi over 3, and I get that this angle is 5 pi over 3. So 2 pi going all the way, and then take away that little pi over 3 amount, right? So I get 5 pi over 3. Now they only wanted the answers um, between 0 and 2 pi, so this was it. I just had two answers, which were pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. I didn't have to give them general solutions. I didn't have to do anything else other than that, okay? So number five is very similar. This one was um, four cosine squared theta equal to two. So I divided both sides by four. I got cosine squared theta equal to one half. I took the square root of both sides. I got cosine theta equals plus or minus. Remember, when you put the square root in there, you're going to get plus or minus. So the fact that I took the square root on both sides means I have to have the plus or minus. And then the square root of one is one, and then the square root of two is still the square root of two. Now you can rationalize that, you don't need to, your calculator will do it all for you. But I have two things to find. I have to find, there's two answers here. So let me rewrite this first before I continue. So what you end up with is you end up with the cosine of theta equal to one over square root of two, and then you end up with the cosine of theta equal to negative one over square root of two. And so then here we get theta equal to cosine inverse of one over square root of two. Now note that this is going to be two values, right? Because it's a positive number, it's not one or zero, so it's not going to be just on one of the axes. It's going to be a positive x value, so there's going to be an answer here, and there's going to be an answer here with that same positive x value. Then you have theta equals cosine inverse of this guy, and oops, I forgot the negative. And so then you have a negative x value, same, same x value over. Um, it is symmetric, right, because it's got the same x value. This one's got the same x value. Um, so we need to figure out what these are from this one, and then we need to figure out what these are for this one. So cosine inverse of 1 over square root of 2, divide by pi, convert it over, we get pi over 4. So we know this one is pi over 4, and if I do 2 pi minus pi over 4, I get this one is 7 pi over 4. So we know the two answers for that one. Then over here for the negatives, we're going to do cosine inverse of negative 1 over square root of 2, and divide by pi, convert it to a fraction, I get 3 pi over 4. So this is 3 pi over 4. And then that's this measurement. So what is this measurement? It would be pi minus three pi over four, which means this measurement is pi over four. So I wanna take pi and add that measurement pi over four. And I get that this one is five pi over four. Again, if you're on the unit circle, you might already be able to tell who has the same x value. But if not, there's no reason in our brain to figure this out, okay? So 5 pi over 4, and then there's my answers, and those are all the answers within 0 to 2 pi. So I have four solutions here for this equation, four solutions.
So let me go on and do another one. So now I'm gonna get into a problem where um, the angle is different and they may have uh, multiple solutions. So let's look at like number nine. Now I'm not doing every single problem, right? Of course, some of them are similar to the others. It's just they're slightly different, right? So I'm going to talk about number nine, um, cosine of two theta minus pi over two equal to negative one. And so then I will take this angle, whatever it is, as crazy looking as it is, and say this would be cosine inverse of negative one. Now look on the pi chart, where no matter what this weird angle is, um, the x value is going to be negative one, which happens here. It only happens in that one spot, so I know it's pi. I am so sorry, I didn't notice. I wasn't showing this on the computer. So this was the problem. So I have cosine of some angle equal to negative one, which means the x value is gonna equal negative one. On the unit circle, that only occurs here. So if I convert this over, I'm gonna say that angle equals the cosine inverse of negative one. And if I type the cosine inverse of negative one in my calculator and then divide by pi, you figure out that it's just one pi. But I did it by looking at my unit circle. So that means that this is going to equal this plus every two pi k units. This one does want the general solutions. Okay, and then it asks you um, for all the ones within zero to two pi. You have to put this here because if you don't, you won't, you won't get all of them between zero and two pi, okay? So what we're gonna do from here is we're gonna solve for theta. So I'm gonna add pi over two, I'm gonna add pi over two, I can only combine like terms. This has a K, so I cannot combine these. I can only combine those. I get three pi over two. That stays the same. Then I'm gonna divide by two, but I have to divide everybody by two. So three pi over two divided by two is three pi over four. Here the twos cancel and I just get pi K. So then I start um, doing the K values, right? So for k equal to zero, we have just three pi over four. For k equal to one, we have three pi over four plus pi, which is seven pi over four. And then if I do k equal to two, I'm gonna add another pi. That two pi is eight pi over four, and that's 11 pi over four, which means it's too big. So I don't have any more other than just these two solutions for k equal to zero and k equal to one. Now number 11 um, was a little bit different because I noticed that we hadn't covered one of the, like this. Um, you can convert it over. Now notice that it's where tangent equals one. Tangent is y over x. So that means in order for it to be negative one, these would have to be the same number, but opposite signs. One of them negative, one of them positive, or one of them negative and one of them positive, so that when they simplified, you got negative one. Well, where does that happen? That only happens at pi over four, by the way. So I know the measurement here is gonna be pi over four, but, um, and then I know that this is square root of two over two and square root of two over two, but they have to have opposite signs. That actually happens over here when the X value is negative and the Y value is positive. And it happens here when the X value is positive, but the Y value is negative. So it doesn't happen here and it doesn't happen there, but that's one pi over four, two pi over four. This is three pi over four. 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, this is 7 pi over 4. So what are the two solutions? The two solutions are going to be theta equal to 3 pi over 4 plus its period. Its period is only pi. Okay, 
or theta equal to 7 pi over 4 plus its period k. And so it wants all the answers between um, 0 and, or no, this one says it wants all the answers for k values equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So it doesn't give you um, a, an interval where the solutions have to be inside. It just tells you find all of these. So that's actually going to give me 10 answers because I'm going to get five of them from this one and five of them from that one. So I'm going to list them here. First, I'm going to have 3 pi over 4. That's with k equal to 0. Then I'm going to take 3 pi over 4 and I'm going to add pi for k equal to 1. And then add another pi for k equal to 2. Add another pi for k equal to 3. Add another pi for k equal to 4. Add another pi for k equal to 5. Then I'm going to take 7 pi over 4 by itself for k equal to 0. And then for k equal to 1, I'm going to add a pi. I already have 11 pi over 4, so I don't need to include um, that one. And then I'm going to add another pi. Oh, I don't need to include anything, anything else, because even 7 pi over 4 itself was over here. So really, we didn't even need to include this one, because this one occurs. Notice that they're pi units apart. So it keeps repeating every pi unit apart. So I didn't need to write that one, actually. Um, so I did not need to write this one at all, okay? I could have done away with this. And it's okay if you have it in there and then you realize later that it's no good, right? So these are going to be my five answers and that's it. I don't have to worry about anything else. This is just going to keep repeating itself every pi unit over and over and over again, okay? Okay. So I think that about covers it. Um, trying to see if there's anything else in the homework that may have been interesting. Yes, I found one. So number 17. Number 17, my last example. I saw one in there like this. Now we already talked about that if they are um, different, that you probably try, want to try to make them the same somehow. The only thing I would think of to do is to convert that into sine theta over cosine theta. And then get them all over to one side. So I could like add this one over. So sine theta, I'm gonna write this as sine theta times one over cosine theta. And then this I'm gonna add over two squared to three over three sine theta equal to zero. And then I notice that both terms have a sine theta in common, so I'm going to factor that out. And then we know from our zero factor property that you could set this factor equal to zero, and you can set this factor equal to zero. Somehow we changed that to a two. That should have been a three. And then this one I can solve, right? Where is the y value equal to zero here and here? So when theta equals um, zero plus pi k, because it'll keep happening over and over and over every pi units, right? And then over here, I will subtract that over. And then I will cross multiply. 
and then I will divide by that coefficient. And then this is the x value that will be negative. So it will be here and here. I just need to figure out what those values are. So cosine inverse of 3 over negative 2 square root of 3. So cosine inverse of 3 over negative 2 square root of 3. Divide by pi, convert to a fraction. I get 5 pi over 6, which is here. 5 pi over 6. So that means this is going to be 7 pi over 6. Um, so I've got two answers. 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k. And then 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k. Okay. And so then it asks me for just the general solutions. It doesn't ask me for specific solutions. So my answers are going to be zero. You don't even need to write zero plus pi k. Just write pi k because when k is zero, it'll be zero. When k is one, it'll be pi and so on and so forth. And then five pi six plus two pi k and then seven pi over six plus two pi k. And so these are the three general role solutions. Okay, so that's pretty much all the examples I have. Hopefully this is enough for you to use your calculator, use your brain, use your unit circle, put everything all together, right, and be able to solve these equations. But that is all I have for 8.3.